This thing's kicking my butt a little bit. All right, so we're here out at Fab Rats. My office manager purchased a new Jeep Wrangler, probably. It's a four-door Jeep of some kind, and it needs gears. So I brought it out here to Paul at Fab Rats. We're gonna be unloading it. He's gonna put gears in it. I don't even know why I'm the one doing this. This is Paul's That's channel. Like... Because you like to talk, and I like to let you. That's why. <laughs> What's your first impressions? Looks like an overlander. I think he's planning on putting the rooftop tent. So it is an overlander. Yeah. So this has, the gears in this are higher. They're like 291s or something like oh, that. Wow. And we're going to be going to 488. So it's not staying in drive, overdrive. It's mm. hunting. It's, hunt, it's hunting real bad. Yep. We putting lockers in it? Yes. Trail rated. Hard to ignore a badge like that. I think I'll. I'll determine if it's really trail rated after I'm done. Oh, it's got a sweet exhaust system on it. Yeah, it's got a muffler in the lead. That's what I fucking hear. Can you Whoa. So you want to get this down to the shop and then I'll show you what it is. I'm going to look at it here. Yep. Let's go down to the shop. I mean, this is a pretty nice little ride. I think this is going to be a nice Jeep for him though. I think so. This is a nice one. Yeah, I think he's going to mostly do overlanding. Like, he'll come on trails with us. All right, let's see what we got. So all the stuff's in the back here. What's that thing? That's for overlanding. Sweet. That's for cooking your pancakes. Well, well that's pretty nifty. So this is the for the 44. It's a Yukon. It's a, it's a posi. A waste of time. This is from East Coast Gears. So we got locker and gears. I'm happy with that. So this is his new lug so nuts. He, need, he wants you to save all these lug nuts because he borrowed them from the tire shop. Oh, that's some need to know information. Yeah, really? Don't yeah. throw them away. Seals for is the 30. Is this the Rowdy 30? Yeah, that, it's the helical gear locker. And I'm assuming that that one is the low gear brake. So we bought a thin gear set for that one. We're assuming. Well, I measured it. Oh, okay. Well, but I looked at a picture and I'm like, hmm, that looks about right. <laughs> All right, I like it. So I'll get it done this week. We'll have this tour apart tomorrow and we'll find out what parts Matt doesn't have here. And I'll call him with the right parts. <laughs> Do I have some kind of a record or? It may have happened one time before where Tim had to run stuff up here. Oh yeah, that definitely happened. So I called my nephew, Tim. Tim, to the rescue. Parts. Never mind, we got some history here. <laughs> all right, well, we'll tear into it tomorrow and we'll know all about it. We gotta get all this stuff out. All right, okay, let's set this hoist, Chase. Seems to be missing some stuff back here. Like a muffler. The smallest sway bar Shops I've ever seen. junk, both sides. Let's gut that rear end right now. We need to figure out if we have axle seals. Because this one's leaking right there. We have pinion seals. We do not have axle seals. It appears to be a thick gear for the 44 and a Thin gear for the 30 in the front is what we got. We got ourselves a genuine matte posi traction because he's against lockers for some reason. So there's a posi, just a spring posi. He likes them that way, so this is a genuine real live locker. Yeah. They're fine, it's gonna work good. The only time it doesn't work is if they like, have one back tire off the ground and then it just transfers power. But in the sand and mud and snow, it works fine. And we'll get it tore apart and I'll call Matt and tell him the parts we don't have. Okay. Roll that out of our way. All right, Jace. Hmm? Pull these cover bolts out. Let's drain this subject. It's silicone on, so we'll. Got Blug. it. Yeah, that's pretty nasty for as new as this thing is. It's had 
had a little bit of water in it at some point in its life. We got 19 and 11. Oh no, 41 and 11. We're gonna pull the axles and jerk it out of there. Right, we just got this axle popped out it was pretty boring that's why we didn't video but popped out so these are a, a non c-clip axle which means they're pressed in there so we'll set that out of the why way does it have like layers of it it goes like up one and then down Maybe here it goes up one they're like an ogre as well they have layers oh that's just how they're machined <laughs> that's oh. just how they are but okay. we got to cut all that stuff off so to change the axle seal Gotta cut that retainer right there, press that off, press the bearing off, put a new axle seal on it, press it on, press it on. But wasn't this one good? Or yeah, was but it we're gonna change them. I'm gonna call Matt. We're not putting this back together tonight because we don't have those parts. He needs to bring them. But I can get the gear stuffed in it. And then tomorrow night, no, we're having to cook out tomorrow night. Ooh. Wednesday night, I can do that. So some of you guys have been asking where Papa Dar is. Well, somebody just showed up. Papa Dar! Hi there. Where have you been? Uh, we was chipping Beaver Mountain this week. Yeah, he's just been off chipping, you guys. Yeah. He works for a living. <laughs> Somebody has to. <laughs> he's busy during the summers. A ton of people have been asking like where your campground is and stuff, so I've been like linking the campground. Has yeah. there been lots of people stop by? Yeah, there's people stop by. Is this Papa Dar's campground? <laughs> I went down the road the other day with Jill and her side by side. Some guy hollered and he came out and he says, I'm just a fan. <laughs> I talked to me for a while. I love it. There. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, Papa Dar's still around. He's just busy. So once it slows down a little bit, we'll probably see him more in the shop, right? A little bit. <laughs> and we'll probably see his Jeep. It's hard to work on it in the summer when you're so busy. We told him that he just needs to pay somebody to fix it and and paint it and be done with oh, it, didn't the we? Jeep project. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. He's still here. He's not lost, just forgotten. Okay. <laughs> He's not forgotten because we've been getting comments. All right, morning. We, well, we, I say we, but I'm the only one in the shop. Empty down here. Working on this new Jeep still. So I finally got bearings and stuff for it. So I'm going to pull the diff out of it and get it over on the table, get it toward park, get the new gears on it, put some bearings on it, get this thing done out of here. So these are my shims. Instead of underneath the bearing right here where most of them go, these ones go on the outside so it's super easy. All right, that should be everything. All right, I guess we'll throw some bearings on real quick. So what I'm doing here is I'm just heating the inside of the bearing up a little bit so that it'll drop right down on there and I don't have to press it. One down. Two down. So, it's pretty easy to tell when you get it hot enough. You can see the color change in it right there. It just starts to turn a little bit brown. That's plenty hot and it'll drop right on. You don't have to mess with it. People do it a ton of different ways. So they heat oil up and set them in oil. And this has always worked for me. So this is what I do I usually. In the winter, I set them on top of my stove. When it's hot out, I just heat that up, so. Super important part of this is that stuff. You gotta have Loctite on these bolts. So you can actually do the same principle with this. You can heat that ring gear up a little bit and get it to slide up on, but I just start all the bolts and pull them up on and it seems to work just fine. So I don't know if I've told you what gears we're going to here. This Jeep had a hard time staying in overdrive because they put bigger tires on it. It was always hunting in between overdrive and drive. So we're putting 488s in it, which should Matt did all his calculations and everything, right? Well, but I looked at a picture and I'm like, that looks about right. It should put us right back to stock gearing, basically, with the size of tire and everything they have. All right. 
that's built. We're ready to go get a pinion out of it, put the pinion bearings on it. Now this one is going to have some bearings underneath here, or not bearings, but shims. So we can set the pinion up properly, so we'll get that done now. And then slap some axle bearings on and seals. We're done with the rear end, move to the front. All right, pinion is out. It's right there. There is a shim right there. And we need to know how thick it is to put it back in here to give us a starting point. So we're gonna hurry and pull this bearing off and then we can know exactly what we're dealing with. Just like that, it pops it right off. Just put that back on there. All right, so we're about ready to do this. New races are in, it's all cleaned up. All I gotta do is go grab the carrier and the pinion and stuff them in there and run a pattern. We'll do that right now. All right, this thing's kicking my butt a little bit. So, I'll turn the light on. I don't have enough hands to hold this piece and the pinion in there and hold a socket in the end of it and hit it. So I recruited Grandpa Sherm, he's coming down and we'll get this thing whipped. I'll show you. I need it to go in far enough that I can get a nut on that to start it. And I'm having a hard time, it's pretty tight. All right, so Grandpa Sherm showed up. I just need you to hold in on that, okay? And then I. I can't get the nut to start, so. That yoke's tight, I don't know why, but. Whoa, about tip that off. We'll see if it pulls or if it strips. Nope. <laughs> Not enough. You need to put something against it that's a little harder than the hand, you know, like a board or something to. Something's bound to help. I've never had a yoke that was that yeah that tight. Oh, that's done nope. anything or not. Can't tell if it what if we do this? Come and hold the yoke in tight. Hold it up like that. And I'll hit it with the air hammer on the other side. Moving. I can tell. Wow. Well, try holding that in there on the other side, and I'll air hammer around this. Push it up in tight. I don't think that's done anything. <laughs> I'm gonna take it out of there and put it on something solid where you can yeah. work it over and get it going on and off a little. Well, I'll push it out of there if you want. Not let that fall. Okay. Maybe I'll push it out of there. Seems to be tight. Maybe we can't get it out now. Maybe it's stuck, huh? Ready? There it comes. Okay, there's that. You can see that, but it's just rubbing on these. It's just super tight. We'll get it cleaned up. All right, so we figured it out. The profile on those was too tall. So I just took a little bit of a flapper disc and sanded them off a little bit. Slide right in now. We're going to be able to put it in no problem. All right, can you push that in? There we go. That's like Got it's some. supposed to work now. All right, so we've got it in there. We got to crush the crush sleeve sli still, but we're gonna need a bigger tool. So we'll shut this thing off, get that crushed, and then we can put this together. All right, so got this thing handled. Feels good, zero lash either way, and it's got a little resistance to spin it. It's dang good. Now we'll put the carrier in it, run a gear pattern, put some axle seals and bearings on it, done. We got it all put in here, temped, and we're at like 35,000 right now, which is too much. We want to be at like six. So I got to put some more shims on this side, take some shims out of that side, 
move it over into the into it so I'll do that all right so now I'm too tight so I got the deal is, is I have to take this little thin shim out find one that's three thousandths thinner put back in there take this off pull a shim out find one that's three thousandths thicker put in that side then it should be perfect you can hear the That means we've got the right amount. We've got four thousandths on it. It's set up good. We're gonna run a pattern and see what it looks like. I can live with that. Pretty good, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's looking good. What's the back side look like? Oh yeah, it's it's good. It's right down in in the middle. We'll take it. That'd Rears are done. Now I just gotta do a little axle work and we're out of here. Alright, so Graf Sherm just went home, got done helping me. I appreciate his help always. I'm gonna cut these off right now. Each side, pull them off, pull bearing off, make life easy. <laughs> Don't have to turn the fan off. All right, that's the easiest way I know how. Well, someone's done it before. See that little gouge in it right there? Someone else has put an axle seal in this and they weren't as careful as me. You can just see a little a little heat thing where I done. Alright, we'll put some new ones on it. We'll be done. This thing's going together. Good. We're to this point. Axle bearings are ready to go on. So I took an old race right here, an old race, and I welded into this pipe. And I use it, I slide it down over, and I drive that on with it. And then I put these little retainers on, and life is good. So I got this set up. I'll set this onto there, like so, and then hammer it down on. It's not really a big deal. It's pretty easy, common stuff, so we'll do it. specialty tools up okay now that that's together all I got to do heat these up drop them on we're ready to put axles back in there it's starting to turn starting to get that gold color so as soon as you go to drop it on your axle starts to take away heat from it quick and then you gotta get it on straight or it wedges and you have to pound it on all right here we go Alright, that one's done. It can set there and cool off. Alright, axles are done. We'll go install these things. Okay. Done, I'll do the other side and we'll be finished. Do you want to tell the viewers what just what just happened? Well, I screwed up uh, the seal that goes in that axle right there. He wasn't happy about it either. No, it sucks because I live in the middle of nowhere. The closest one of those is an hour away, so that's two hours and round trip. he's already been there today. Already been there today, so, and it's what, seven o'clock at night? 6.30. So this bleeping, bleep, bleep, bleeping Jeep this. That's why I don't like Jeeps. Because they don't have Chevy parts on them like I put on stuff. So. Good job, John. Good job. Way to buy a Jeep. John, what were you thinking? Toyota. <laughs> Toyota Chevrolet. Let's stick with those stuff. You have to fix them to make anything decent nowadays. And then you try to fix it and you go ahead and ruin the sale that you don't have. So, I'll put the drive line on it and do the front end. But the gears went in good, if that matters to anyone. So. What's going down right now? Well, we're driving back to Cedar. I already been here once today and got a seal and a bearing because I ruined one. Now we're coming back because I ruined that one. Michelle thinks it's time for me to take her out to dinner when you have to come for parts, so. Impromptu date night brought to you by Broken Park number 9912S. Get in the zone, auto zone. Whoa, whoa! That's a loud car. Supposed to have some parts there. Bearing and a race. Do you need to get two?
too, just in case. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Let's go get some sushi. Hope they got steak. Get a door for you. There you go. I'd seriously stab somebody if I tried to do that. <laughs> you would stab somebody. <laughs> Woo! There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I even knew it was coming. How is it? Good. Shrimp. Little sushi rolls. They're almost gone. They're okay, but that is way better. Whatever, that sushi roll is delicious. Date night, part getting, success. Success. Got no. the part, had the date, now we're driving home. All right, I got this junker all put back together. It looks good, everything looks like it should be. This is all cleaned up. The sill fit in it. So, I don't know what the deal was, but I'm going to put this back together. Let's see. I got to have I got to have this. Probably an important part. Okay, now for real this time. I've never had this much problem with an axle sill ever. Should have been done with this by like noon yesterday. Oh yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. Fixed. Now it'll be right. Just needed to go out to dinner with my wife, that's all. All right, this thing is handled, it's fixed. It's on, diff cover's glued on, brakes are all on. I'm done with the rear end. Now we're gonna move up here and tackle this little Dana 30. Right here, this one's easy. I can do these in my sleep. There's no tricky bearing, nothing. Well, there really wasn't on the back. I just made it hard. So we'll get this pulled apart and get it finished. All right, she's gutted. Front end is apart. Now, we'll take and put some of this stuff right there in it, those gears on it, and then she'll go back together and we'll take it for a test ride. All right, we ran into a snag. I'll show you what we got going on here. These are the inner axle sills that we need. These are what they sent. You can see the difference. So we're... Uh, we're holding up at the moment. So, but I mocked up the front end. Everything went together good. It's gonna be great. I just, I'd be done if I had axle seals. Oh, I'm just waiting now. All right, so Matt came through, brought us our parts we needed. Posi lube, Trevor brought them up and dropped them off to us. And now we're putting her together. This is what we're doing. We're putting an axle seal in right now. I got this sweet little tool that makes it so you don't smash your fingers. And it just presses that axle seal right in. Tire rod seems to be exactly in the way of everything. Those are the seals that I just put in. One on each side. So now I can put this carrier in it. This is the setup. 456 gears with a helical style Detroit locker. Life's gonna be good. He'll love it. I got that going. I don't know if you can see it. That's a pattern. It's perfect. Running right in the middle. It's good. Everything looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and button this thing up. All right, this thing's handled. It's all back together. Front end, I gotta put oil in the front diff, oil in the rear diff. I gotta put this stuff in the rear because it's got a posi in it and it needs that. So we'll pump some oil in it and put tires on, take it for a test ride. All right, we are uh, currently test driving this thing. We didn't test drive it before, but Matt did. 
and he told me what it was doing so we'll see if it fixed it so when we were in overdrive it would try to shift between drive and overdrive back and forth so we'll see if if gear and it fixed it we got brakes it's a bonus it needs an exhaust on it bad Put your seatbelt on. We're gonna go for a ride. We're gonna run to Todd's, get ourselves a Coke. What do you think? Okay. Seems to be good. It's not making any funny vibration noises or anything. Everything seems to be good. We made her to Todd's. Rear end, front end aren't hot. Everything's looking good. We got ourselves a Coke. Well, a Mountain Dew and a Sprite. And we're heading home. All right, so the Jeep's done. We're just putting the finishing touches on it, which is happening right there in the corner of that. Can't have a Jeep without a Fabrat sticker in it. Much better. That's good. All right. We got the winter towing rollback here. That's how you pick a car up when you don't want to drive it home. Yep. You just load it and haul it home. That's how you pick a, a truck up in style, right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. And we got the owner here. You guys might have recognized him for Matt's off-road recovery. Yeah. He's pretty much Matt's right-hand man when it comes to the towing aspect yeah. of his business. Yeah. So. You have to change out your shirt. Oh yeah. Feels more appropriate. Oh today. Yeah. yeah. Turn around. Yeah. There we go. Well, I would have run this thing to Carmel and back. Yeah. Have at her. Oh yeah. Already. Uh, just already. Got power back where you need it again. Oh my. I cannot. I just. I, I'm, I'm He's so, at a loss for I words. I am. I am so amazed. That That's I good. I was hoping it was different because I didn't get. I just drove it after it was fixed. So. Ten out of ten. Oh, eleven out of ten. Good, no leaks. No leaks. It's good to go. Eleven out of ten for yep. sure. Thank you guys so no much. No problem. Bad rat. Feels good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, just finished John's Jeep. Gears, lockers, everything's good in it. Took it for a little ride. Seems to be good. John took it for a ride. He loves it and he can go put it to work. Thanks for watching. <laughs>